says we are live now welcome everybody uh, i'm uh, justine uh, hosting this channel what if the search for truth uh, these thursdays we've been having the amazing josh x yep. and today we are blessed to have also his wife uh michelle or at least better half or are you equally good <laughs> hello everyone good day yes thank you for joining us again it's a pleasure to have you and it's a pleasure to be with you again brother justin thank you so time. much thank you so much for your time and mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, invaluable knowledge uh I would just like to say first off that if somebody, uh, yeah, let's do that first and foremost. Check that if uh, that we can be, we can be seen, and that, uh, for example, the because <clears throat> last week and the week before we were very different in uh, volume. Our yeah. audio was so far apart. So if somebody can. Uh, It's great to have the real Saint Nicholas with us tonight. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I've, I thought it was best to to be a be the, be the part. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I see it looks like somebody uh, has let me say no. Uh, ha ha. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody if somebody can see and hear us, uh, do you see us okay? And do you hear us okay? Are our audio somewhat similar? Probably they can't tell before the hair of both. No extremes. <laughs> no extreme variation. Loud and clear. And all is okay. No shouting. <laughs> can you also uh, verify that our audio is more or less similar? Say yeah. something, Josh. I will. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good day, everybody. <laughs> uh, at least we can be heard. So, so anyway, if. If someone uh, can, um, also if it's not, if it's very much different, let us know. Mm -hmm. So, Christ Mass, Josh and Michelle. We want to be here to spread Christmas cheer. Yeah. To help beings who may have been involved with certain types of concepts that make them feel very different about Christmas, bring back the joy to be able to celebrate life in each moment and see the joy in everything. So let's cross concepts and bring truth to the very meaning of Christmas. Mm. We want you to have a merry Christmas. A very yeah. merry Christmas. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, because I think most people, um, they have... That's why when we discussed uh, what we we're going to call this episode, I remember you. Rem I remember asking you when you said uh, the lost joy of Christmas, because most people uh, of of Babylon <laughs> still have joy, feel joy around the season. Yes. Uh, hopefully, but there Whether is it's material or immaterial. It's important that we see the joy in everything. Mm. If we do not, this perception. And the only thing that has changed is the chemicals that we create inside of ourselves, which create this uh, release of the, uh, you can say, the catabolic hormones that cause us this uh, destruction of our body and uh, our mind, and the way that we see the world. Mm. And just by changing the way we see things and focusing on the good, we can absolutely create endorphins, which are healing and anabolic to our system and uh, see the joy in life. Mm. It's very special time of year that we see this wonderful community of everyone yeah. enjoying happiness whether it's limited to concepts or uh, presents gifts however one interprets that mm. Mm. but there's a there's a side to the christ mass uh, that not many people or beings uh, are aware you know that the chrismal race rising up the vertebrae and uh, or going down and then back up or 
this you will fill us in on but um it's it's allergies right it's it's all everything is allergies viable and most of the uh, stories we know has a for us hidden meaning yeah everything is allegorical then it creates concepts of people who do nothing but read things on on that face value there's a very cryptic message if one can see it and one has the um synchronicities by their seeking um, yes face value nothing is true everything is warped by one's perception even the very christmas tales that we hear shall we do the etymology of christmas itself in the beginning yes christmas or christ mass if we see christ first let's deal with this word here Christ, you could say, was a type of consciousness um, within a man supposedly called Jesus. This is up for debate, and that's conceptual, so we just stick with what we can see here. Seeing the vibration of the full magnetic consciousness within your sine wave physical. So this is activating the Taurus field, which we see behind you within oneself, a union of the energies of masculine and feminine. M is the center. This is balance number 13. These are related to the 13 steps that we see across the, the conspiracy world and the hidden messages inside of them. And this is your alpha sine wave. So seeing the vibration of the full magnetism with your conscious sine wave and your physical balance, seeing the alpha sine wave. And this is what Christmas is really about, bringing balance. So just to add something to Josh's uh, etymology, if we look at the numerology of it, mm. we have Christ, which is the seven seven, the double sevens. Mm. And then mass, which is the 33. So if we add them together, we get the 110, which is then actually just the 1-1. One, one. So the 11 or L even. And I'm sure that Josh has spoke about the 11 before being the twin pillars mm. and the L, evening out the L, which is the God part within. And then we have the 7-7, seven, seven, which is here, the 77, which Josh then spoke of, with the Christ being the union between the two, the two energies. And then the 33 is related to the G in the alphabet, if you go round it twice. The G is the 33rd letter of the alphabet. Once it's gone round full circle. Okay, yeah. So it's the second loop of the alphabet. So we've got the, the seven and the 33 that are intertwined as the letter G. So um, the Christmas in all is the, the repeated number se sequence of the 11 out even linked together with the God particle within, which is the energies that. The pure balance that one can find, and this union frees oneself, liberates oneself from samsara or the cycle of it. This, elite, this 11 is related to the temples or the twin pillars. And these is what one builds up on a journey to search for freedom. And the unification of this matter, material mind and body with spirit is how this unifies to then be destroyed, which we'll talk about later on. So can you see this wonderful synchronization just with the etymology and numerology that is related to a divine sequence that is only seen by the seers of the unseen? Mm. Maybe we should bring down here. There we go. Mm. And if anybody has any uh, concepts or things that they'd like to speak about or ask questions with regarding their perception on Christmas. 
that will be good for discussion here. Feel free to uh, ask your questions in the chat if you have any. I will try to keep track on them. I wanted to um, bring up about Santa as well, Santa Claus. Um, there's a clause in the actual word itself. So, <laughs> um, but when we speak of uh, the Santa Claus, I've written another numerology for that one. And uh, this is the 111. So we've got the repeating number sequences again. And when we, when we see these numbers or these vibrations that are linked to the numbers and the number sequences is when um, it's kind of like a call for the, the universe is, is telling you to search, you know, for, search this. for these, <laughs> these hidden and these hidden answers that are all um, like codes that we've been left by, you know, the, you know, the, the energy systems that are here already. So it's all about a vibration that it holds and everything's hidden in plain sight. So it's mm. all about, you know, they tell us, even with the Matrix films that they give you, they tell us the true um, meaning behind it. You just have to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And if you take it on face value, this is the incorrect way. And it can seem like it's evil or um, that you don't want to celebrate this kind of festive time of year because you feel like everything's um, about materialistic concepts. But if you actually see through that and see the joy and the magic behind it all, it, it truly is something magnificent and it should be celebrated because um, the actual Christmas day is the rising of the sun. And this is where we've, you know, this is why we celebrate this time of year and the solstice, which is why we're heading towards the water fast so that we can have that clear system and then be able to rise with the energies that are happening within the universe so that we can become in line with that as well. So Santa Claus is uh, switched from the original Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas gave presents. Now presence itself is found in this very moment of now. So he would deliver his gifts via teachings of this system which is to live void of this previous, which is the pre-sense, and bring one's attention to this moment. But the only way that the um, children could get the gifts was through being virtuous and good. So all the songs that you hear um, about Christmas is actually, you know, if you're a good boy or a good girl, you get the gift of presents. And that's truly what we're what we're about is that the gift is the present moment, and we get this by changing our low vibration of the ego and the sinful world to the virtuous energy and the good um, feeling and the good energy and the joyous moments that we can have with family, friends, and energy connections. And that's when you know we get that gift of presence is when we can truly have that joy in our hearts. And you don't and hold you don't hold on. You see, presence and enlightenment is only found by just being here with no concepts, nothing previous, letting go of everything. And the joy will reveal itself. You see, thinking is the thing that separates everyone from joy because they live in a past or future. That past or future doesn't exist and causes a great stress on oneself. There's a grand revelation when one can surrender these concepts and just let go. And in that letting go, there is no need for action. There is no need for any doing. It's just an absolute grand seeing, which is here one of the hardest things that people and persons with identity is to just look without any interpretation from their ego or their mind. And this is how it's found. I wanted to share before we get into this space about the uh, 111 of Santa Claus, because 111 
if anyone is um, a seeker, inner stands magnetism, the phi ratio, this 111 is actually related to this star here. Now, one is to phi as phi is to one, and the one is the manifestation. It is the alpha wave, number one, masculine energy. The golden ratio triangle is hidden in here three times. So you see one golden ratio, this is the golden ratio. There's one, two, and three. One, one, one. But Santa Claus is not Saint Nicholas. Santa is an anagram for Satan. And a clause is always hidden within the contract. So the contract of Santa is for one to fall trapped into the materialism aspect of it that is offered by the world. Mm. Scriptures always warn people to not love the world or anything in it. The world has a grand offering which builds ego, thoughts, desires, suffering, pain, past, future, anxiety, depression. But this is only found in a thought. And this is why he was changed to the color red, because it attracts that um, vibration. Shift. It's the lowest root chakra. And the survival, um, it takes you back into that survival mode, which is why they use it on stop signs, <laughs> yes, Coca-Cola, stop signs and alert signs, because it, it, it kind of brings up that um, survival instinct naturally the red color so it was changed from he was changed from green to red and uh by coca-cola and um that was you know another uh, thing to look out for is that it used to be part of the the green which was the balance the heart chakra and then it got taken down to the red the red color over time. Well, you see the Taurus that we have behind you. It's always a perfect example. Green is the neutral plane from both energies. But are, are, excuse me. Uh, before the, the the color of Christmas was green, it was changed by Coca Cola. Did you say that? Yeah, yeah. it was changed by Coca Cola. But also, the world is uh, absolutely perfect and synchronized with all things. Uh -huh. Coca-Cola is red for a very grand reason. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Santa Claus himself is the clause of Satan, you could say, which is the offering of contracts and separation within your persona. And then that goes into the system with the maritime. You know, Saint Nicholas was a freer from maritime. He was a freer from all of these things. Hmm. And Santa Claus is not. But it's a choice. It's the way that one perceives the world, you know. People who have seeked a certain level of perception, there's always a negativity that comes with, uh, you know, when one starts to reveal the nature of the world. But it is what it is and it does what it does. But it doesn't mean you need to, to be that. Just because the world and you see people unconsciously shopping, they're happy and you seem to not be happy. Or one will seem to not be happy because of the switch of their ultra perception. But a one to truly be happy is to rise above the world and to see the world is a machine and you've just rose above this machine. And your Christmas can be absolutely filled with joy because joy is found in one's perception. Mm. And you should never not enjoy any moment that's given to you as a gift. This here is the Holy Trinity. And this is also looked upon by a lot of conspiracy uh, or conspiracies as something very negative. But this is an absolute perfection of the physical nature of our world, of our earth, I should say. The holy days that we are going through right now are holy days. You can see within the Trinity, there's tri, which means three. And you can see the three triangles in here. Mind or you could say the unification, mind, body, spirit. Mm. 
the ultimate truth that all teachings always point to is this uh, unification of your mind, body and spirit. And the elements that come with that and all of the, the additions, it's all part of a oneness. And, you know, once you realise that that's all within you and your being is when you will be able to free yourself from the blocks and the chains that have been inserted through the programmes that you've received during your time through growth. Is that, you know, we are not the concept of anything. We are free and we are one with everything. But it seems to be those programmes that take us away from the inner tutor and want to make everything external all the time, like the need to learn, the need to collect things, the need or the want to be something that someone else has or is. And all of those things are so external and they're not part of the oneness. And if we can unify these um, concepts and make it part of what's within us, then we can see the true beauty in everything. And that's where I think that pe beings get stuck with mm. these concepts. Of... Even traps, they're beautiful. Mm. Because they're an aspect of yourself that's being created mm. for you if one is not ready to fall into experience suffering and what it is like to be separate from the truth. Mm. See, what's after Christmas Day? You have Boxing Day. Box in G. What's it to be boxed? to be in a cube, to be in a square. We spoke of this in the etymology, box, square, and cube, C-U-B-B, ox, or the box itself. And the square is the S-Q that you are, and all of the solutions are hidden within the word. Materialism brings box in day. So everybody's has celebrated this mysterious joy of Christmas. They get their presents, and then the next day they're back in that box because they're playing with these material gifts that keep them separated and suffering. Now the joy of Christmas doesn't exist. There's no longer any presence. And there's a great silence. They teach or they, the world shows that Christmas time is a space for extravagant dinners, turkeys, and uh, alcohol, chocolates, and these types of things. But what does this, this do to the being itself? It lowers the vibration it gives you a lot of digestion and your body is then denser and it can't relate to the energies that are happening and the true magic that's happening because your avatar is so dense from all of this poison that you have fed it which is why we fast during this period because to to the x family this is about freedom this time and this sure. is what what the sun does is that the reason why it's celebrated so um so widely is because the sun starts to rise it stands still for the three days which is what the solstice actually truly means is the soul the sun and the stasis is the standing still of stasis or, <laughs> yes st static so the sun will stay still for those three days and after that 72 hour period which is why 72 is a celebrated number as well with creation is that after that period of time, this is when our sun starts to rise. And the same for the summer solstice is when it starts to fall. This is the changing of the season. And this is why it's heavily celebrated because at this time of year is when we are approaching the um, springtime, which is where we can start planting all the seeds. And this is where we see new growth. So, um, and this is why Capricorn is a climbing sign from the, the bottom because he's the climber, you know, the, the Capricorn, the climber. And that's why um, with this celebration, this magic, we, we have so much magic around this time. And again, the trap that you could fall to is filling the body heavily full of um, spirits, <laughs> alcohol and food that, you know, really doesn't do much apart from help create death and destruction within the avatar. And this is why we love to keep our bodies clean at these times, uh, the quarter days, especially with the solstice and the equinoxes, because we get heavy energies where we can see clear and um, the cross quarter days as well, like Halloween. These times are very special and they should be 
celebrated as every moment should be. I have a personal question regarding uh, this fasting and this period in time. Uh, we discussed earlier, you know, if somebody wanted to join their family in, uh, you know, eating, not just have a juice on the table on the Christmas day and these things. So uh, I, I was planning now to juice until uh, Saturday and then do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday water. But will I then, and then start with the, uh, you know, soft fruits and these things, but will I then lose the magic as a when? You are the magic. This is an aid, this is an aid. So see, everything, can, everything that we're talking about now lives in the conceptual world. And to be free from all concepts is the only space of true enlightenment and beyond. But this is an aid in one getting there. And your temple will be clear and clean. So the reason that we've taken it forward slightly is so that you can make a safe transition back to eating before you have something that may cause an issue if you didn't do that, that uh, process. Mm -hmm. However, your temple will be clear and clean and you will, be, you will feel that magic so much more. Um, it's not about the, you know, it's about what's in the system. So you're not dense at this time. And um, the collective awareness about these times and these energies is, is, is raising. So it's more of a bridge to the self. Mm. You see, to, to know the person and to clean the person, to go back into a, a natural state is the supernatural state. And then to clean the person allows one to become aware of the nature of their mind, how it functions. It begins to see clear. So you understand the psychology of oneself. So it's a pathway into seeing and distilling the nature of your thoughts. And then once one can see the mind, they can free the mind. Mm -hmm. The mind is the gathering of concepts, which is the ego. So in freeing the mind, it gives one the ability to see the self within them. Mm. But the true nature is one can never actually see the self. They can only be the self. So you build this temple up. This is a representation of the Twin Towers. This is why it was there as a part of our reality and then fell on the 33rd year. It was built to fall on the 33rd year, which is the 33 vertebrae, which is related to the G within the Freemason masculine and feminine single, uh, symbol. And then you have to drop everything to find zero point. There, you cannot hold on to anything. You cannot think to find it. You cannot seek to find it because you are it, but you can never be it full of concepts. So this building of the temple is to get to a point which is called the abyss that one has to completely surrender all of these things to be able to look and only look with no judgment and in not judging, there it is revealed to you. But to see without any of this, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the pathway mm -hmm. for letting go because how can one fathom how can one look without any interpretation or any concept arising? Can one look at a tree without calling it a tree? Or seeing anything without labeling it? And this is, this is the, the pathway to one's sacred science. So as I wrote celebrate, Nisha said it a few times, so I just share it. The celly is celestial, but celestial, what is this? A celebrate is to see L, with the ether, B, R, eight. Eight is the reciprocation or, or, or the, the vibration. Even in the word rate, you can see the full magnetic eight. This is why Audi called it R8, because it's to do with this energy field. You know, Shao has a V power. V is the feminine, 22 master number. The Shao petrol power, you see? And then all these corporations have these uh, symbols, don't they? Mm. 
there's another one in, in the UK, and I can't remember what it is. is it, you know the BMW? Mm. What power is it? What power? They say it's M power. Yeah, yeah. yeah, M power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the power is only found in the M, in, in, in the perfect balance. So it's all there. Everything is there within the reality. is a complete construct from one's self. To observe, to see, to, to believe that this reality is, is very real when one is identified in the person. And the person can begin to seek. And uh, in that seeking, you can unveil the very cryptic code of the creation which has been created by yourself. I wanted to speak a little bit about um, magic, the magic of Christmas. Mm. Um, just because a lot of beings are, again, some of it is spoke of as a, like a pagan type, negative, bad, um, thing that can be like black magic and things that are, all these words are sort of thrown around the spiritual community a little bit now if we think of the word of magic abracadabra or abrahadabra mm -hmm. which is the more occult uh, meaning of abracadabra and magic um, if we look at these two the two ends abra or abra adabra is 22 so this is our mm -hmm feminine V. Um, and each word Abra means to remove the sun, remove sun, remove sun, the sine wave on, the, the sine wave which is the false construct of the material plane rather than the self. And the actual meaning of Abra Kadabra is I will create as I speak. Mm. The spoken word or the intent or the thought is actually how you create your magic, your spells. And these kind of things are what we talk of when we say, say your intent or speak your intent to your um, juice, to your family, to, your, to, to yourself, to the self, because this is, this is how you manifest. And this is the real magic that is inside of every one of us. Mm -hmm. It's a real magic that's forgotten, lost, or not accepted or um, not taught known. by the world. The world teaches that this is bad mm. because the world is the opposite of the truth. But no one that is in that egoic state will be ever to create me, uh, magic because it's Program. an actual um, samsara cycle. <laughs> you have to live it and you know be it to be able to create this. So when they say like the black magic, these, these beings are creating and manifesting what they, what their intent is. So if you say to your child, you're very naughty, always, you're always naughty. They're going to be that because this is actually what you're telling them. They are, it's always about a positive affirmation and a joyous outlook and a, a being that love with inside of you which you can create work your world with and this is the um, magic that happens with the Taurus and the law of attraction is like as above so below as within so without and we are a mirror of that and this is how we create these spells and if you look at the the center of Abra Kadabra Kadabra is the eight and the infinity so the kind of samsara of this the realm um, which is where we loop the energy and reciprocate the energy when we speak of the abra hadabra the more occult version is the the m the middle and the mother which is then creating that at the center of the m we get to that die state that i'm sure Josh has been through on a couple of videos before is where we Release get to light, that, yeah. yeah, the light the stage of light. And this is protected by the, the mother, the mother Gaia's energy. And um, with the reciprocating Taurus, this is how we create. You need to circle the square. This is the box. And then you put the circle around this square. See the black within magic is to lack magic. B is two in the alphabet second to lack. Black is to lack any color, any light. So to lack magic means that one is not creating the magic for themselves. It's being created for you. 
And that is by recycling old information via the ego and the mind. So to be able to create, to become fully aware and present in this moment, in understanding your reality, in understanding the body and the mind, the psychological processes and all the alchemy, the alchemy or the alchemist with inside yourself, you create chemistry just by a thought. But most of us who identify in ego who have no idea have a consistent program of thoughts which creates a negativity inside of ourselves and have no control over it. But the magic is found in control. And when we speak of the black, without the black, we wouldn't have, so without the dark, we wouldn't have the light and vice versa. So it's all about that duality of this realm about learning. So unless we face our shadow self, or our shadows or our deep egotistical ways, we'll never see the light because if you don't want to face the dark, you're not going to bring it to the light. You need to take it by the hand and love the darkness and be with the darkness and sit with it to then see the light and come out and be that powerful magician that we truly are within. Because the light comes from you. And only in silence, contemplation, and true focus and awareness, does one come to this realization, to this revelation that this light emanates from yourself? You've projected this world, so why can't you control it? Hmm. You're the universe, the one verse in you. No, you nobody need... else's path, just you. In you, the one. And this is why you win or you have won because you've won. And then the one is reversed as no W. Now, how many of you are there? If you have a double U, it means there's a split personality or bipolarism, which means the mind is interpreting and it's there for you. So unless one can control themselves and change their perception and sweeten the mind and have it use ha, using the mind and not using not letting the mind use you with the w as well this is the flip side of the m so when we become into the center this is where we create that die again so what josh was saying with the w there's two u's and we need to bring it to that center point there the balance the heart space and this is where we become centered and where we have won because the W and the M are one and the same. They're just flipped or mirrored. Oh, so they're the three so, and the E and the M and the W. So that center point there of die state, the attraction. divine child. Um, so we've had we've got the masculine and feminine energies of the AL and the EL. If I just bring up a, a small picture here so we can have a little look at that side of things so the masculine um energies of the ao and the feminine energies of the eo this is where we create that die state when josh said earlier on blue. with the light they create that spark and this is the divine child now the divine child would be the 33 and the 33 relates back to the spine that we spoke of. Do you want to go into the spine a little time? Yeah, we need to. We need to go into the spine just a small I bit as well to talk the, about the how um, Santa Claus climbs up the chimney. And why there are trees that are called pine trees. So if we if we just um, take a look at that one more time, so we've got the masculine, the 11. Red shift. The feminine, the 22. Blue shift of a magnetic field. And the die state, the divine child, which is the 33, as it reciprocates round. And then 12x12 12 equals 144. And the what? 144 will make it home. The 144,000 is the divine light. Um, that emanates within all of our being. It is not a collective number of beings. Yeah, we we don't have to have a name, our name on a list, uh, a physical list, um, in the Bible. 
it is actually um, the chakra system that lights up as you gain balance. As you, as you free your energy, you'll never ever find enlightenment by breathing, you know, doing these types of forcing Kundalini energy. It's, it's, it has to actually uh, be a vibration which you carry all moments and it elevates this sacred secret or the sacrum secretion. And uh, you could say the, the pressure pumps and as it rises, uh, one one stays and you don't need these practices as such because practices are also concepts which can actually deter you and take you away so you can almost create an ego that is spiritual or believes one is spiritual by doing these practices but these practices by not holding on to them and doing them they can also bring peace or silence so they, ju they so just they just helped the oh sorry sorry Go on, brother. no i just had a question about you know getting there where what, what you are talking about now is it's not you know just snap your fingers and you know you go it, it is a process right it needs to be there's a few things that needs to be in in place to it's this among among the diet you know and the yes being Same. pure in all moments being virtuous mm -hmm. not having you know the virtues the grand steps each virtue is attached to a, a, a system of energy within inside yourself. I mean, being patient is a wonderful thing because the nature of impatience causes anger to arise. Mm. You know, people have it, you could say embarrassment when one has pride, but this arises also anger. And expectations of events causes one to suffer because something should be very different. And all these desires and concepts that we hold need to be worked through, which is the destruction of demons. You know, these demons and ghosts, quickly, I, I should have left that on there, but it's all about El Eve 8, to El Even, to leave, one must El Eve, and uh, eliminate is El I'm in 8, or it's all related, you see. Um, what was I speaking about just before? No. The concept has left me. It's fine, but we will go in. No, this is fine. Um, should we go into the tree, the Scotch yes, pine? Sir, mm. Yeah. I just wanted to say one thing about the um, practices that we just spoke of. So, in order to help still the and um, center and balance the body, these practices are useful um, for many beings that are within a loop of um, work and. Um, chaos busyness yeah so um if you find that your world is relatively chaotic then actually doing some breath work or meditation or yoga does actually help to bring balance and stillness to the being which is a great practice but um what we were speaking of just now was that it's the concept of it can keep you trapped there so um a lot of beings that attach themselves to one program whether it be eating bad food or breath work doing it religiously all the time every day with no time to actually be within and focusing counting on our breaths and you know really because, because the belief that. of that going to change you eludes you from the self because you are the self and see those seekingness means that that's very separate, which causes this concept to keep you from the very nature of yourself. So um, it, that's for a very high level practitioner, for somebody to surrender the concepts, you know, to do something without the expectation of it. That's all it is, you know. So, so what you were saying, brother, with um, regards to taking those small steps of progression, these. Um, practices are very useful for a progression a transition to the higher states which you you just mentioned rightly then that you know we wouldn't um, take someone into a water fast if they were eating meat and dairy and you know because it would be horrendous side effects for them the symptoms of candida and detox would be too great so you need to if you've got a goal here or a, 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 a set um place where you'd like to be you can't just jump from here to here it's a process of um, practicing certain things to gain that knowledge and notice to get there so 
which brought me back to the very start. Are you able to hold that for me one second, please? You got it? Yeah. So the ladder is the uh, ladder, and it's a small, slow, and steady growth that builds oneself the ability to see and perceive the way and the nature of this psychological process through a built up mind. Now, we were talking of demons. One must destroy every demon that they have. D means to remove and mon means one. So demons remove you from oneness. So the very thoughts of something within the past which holds pain brings it to this very moment and you feel this, but this is an illusion and something which doesn't exist. You know, the very concept of the future, you can never be in the future. You will never ever reach it. it again, this is a concept. The future will arise as a now. The past arose as a now and you can only live in this very moment of now. Fear arises as a thought about a perception of something which is not here. So destroying these demons or these G hosts, which is like a host is a parasite, is very necessary on the steps to clear one's path, to align with a freer energy field. Mm. And this is the mystery of uh, the occult art to say that there was demons and ghosts and People would conjure these spirits up, but truly it's thought processes. All from within, not external. There's no external. It's all within you. This is a, a made up concept. As Josh said, it's not a um, an external entity trying to attach to you or trying to um, make you do negative things. It's the actual inner you the shadow self that needs to be brought to the light. Look, the, the way that we can get around this is, um, you know, why, why are we attaching to these thoughts? What, are, what is it that's making them so appealing to our being? The, the freedom that you get once you start stripping away these um, hosts or these demons and you start getting little, little angels attaching to you this is the freedom that you feel and and the way that this is done is like we said through the ladder system of the virtues and it is small steps that you can gain all of these um energetic beings or energetic thoughts they can be decreased and the positive ones can be increased and we can create that balance again where it's at the moment a lot of beings are living in that lower chakra dense fearful state of um this this whole covid thing that's happening with the separation Good is sense. keeping us um oh, it just <laughs> it picks up this yeah. bit and um a lot of beings are finding that fear and separation whereas when we strip away that and see what's actually going on in the world it's nothing bad it's only about the media that it's a screen it it's a screen and it's all consensual and you consent by your attention so how does one free themselves from thinking give no attention to the thinking that's or the thought and redirect it into the moment that you're in and be so involved in this moment that there's no even concept of time and you get to experience life in the fullest redirect attention consistently away from these things you will have a demon offering you a thought you could say and then the attention drawn away from that thought causes no suffering and it's the consistent attention and your focus which dissipates these and the more that one can practice presence and their attention drawn to this moment the more one becomes free very quickly you know the anger the fear the resentment anxiety and depression these are all coming from your illusions the ghosts mm. they don't exist you see you felt this but yet you remained here sat in a chair and suffered and none of it existed I have I have a question regarding uh, thinking or contemplation or whatever you want to also I have been quite uh, rid of 
all these things like in anxiety depression all this all this thinking about you know maybe things that might happen that cause you some pain however what i have issues uh, stop thinking about is more or less if let's say for example you know i've been fixing this apartment and it's like a creative process right you have to choose colors you have to choose all these things and this can take my you know take over my mind in a way but this is not causing me any pain this is this is just me trying to find out how i'm going to do things how how would that kind of thinking is that contemplation yeah but see the very question that arose from that is the thinker to ignore that very thinker there and to continue just to do what you're doing is to be free from the thinker so one shouldn't one shouldn't so just any... be with it keep the attention on what you're doing and use the processes that are available to you which is you've got this wonderful temple you have the ability to utilize your life experiences etc within this body form but there's only in a there's only an offering of this illusory concept because you do what you're doing but as you do it you be it because if it's not causing you any stress that you feel uh, if if there's no stress there or there's obviously a question there for you that you've just asked so the, the very question the questioner is um seen by seen. you yeah so yourself. it's it's not even a question for you if it's causing you no problem um and it's just a, a an activity that you're doing to make things easier for yourself or more beneficial then it's it just a pleasure yeah i would say it's more a pleasure than a pain mm -hmm. because i i enjoy creating you know yeah. so it's you're expressing can you see the question of it? can you uh, as it arises can your awareness as awareness itself as the question arises can you see that you're actually watching this very question arise with the question i would say yes yeah so are you the questioner or are you the seer of the question I am the seer of the question. There you go. So you know the difference. So the questioner itself is the ego and it's the mind, but you're the true seer of that. So as you sit down in your stillness, and we can call it meditation, meditation is not an action, it's a state. But as you do this, you see the levels of awareness and you go back with yourself and you say, you know, as these things arise, am I this? Am I a questioner? Mm -hmm. And I, uh, and what do I see here? Am I actually aware that I am aware of the questioner, yet I see it? And then this allows the, you could say, the decompartmentalization and recognition of one's psychological processes to become aware of these very systems, mind, body, and spirit. But this is about Christmas, so we'll keep it about you know Christmas. So I'm trying to elude that because it it can come in quite deep. So we'll go to the Christmas tree, guys. Let's do it. Okay, so we there have a question arose arising in the chat. Uh, I think we'll just hold them on, just wait with them maybe a little bit until we get through what we need to get through. We'll just quickly go over the Christmas tree. So the Christmas tree is a Scotch or Scotch pine tree. So you have the word pine and you put an S in front of it, which represents the spine, or the spine. At the top of the tree, there's a star. So we'll just leave uh, the question of the star. So in the spine, it's a sine wave of light, of consciousness that moves, that ends the new beginning to the ether. So it, it ends the cycling of this redshift to the new beginning of this ether. And uh, the reason why our trees have this wonderful spiral of tinsel around it and lights as it progresses up is the illumination as one increases through the energy field of this sine wave spine that we do have. You can even see the sine wave of light in E within it. Spines are curved. They're not straight. Spine is a representation of the chimney. Or the ladder that Josh just mentioned, the owl adder. 
So we've got the vertebrae that run up here. And there is, sorry, I'm trying to write with the opposite hand. Um, <laughs> you wonder why I'm writing like a child. It's because, <laughs> we should have sat in that way. <laughs> you did say that. We have the 33 vertebrae that run up the spine up to the 12 cranial nerves, the 12 disciples. Yeah, the, the, the three kings that bring their gifts of uh, serotonin, <laughs> melatonin, and dopamine. Um, the gold, silver, and the uh, and frankincense in there. And um, so the 33 are the steps, the Jacob's ladder, the steps to enlightenment mm. or enlightening the mind. <laughs> Being free from concepts. <laughs> the light <laughs> of the mind with the third eye activation. Um, these, the 33, actually, as we get to the age of approximately 26, actually, the bottom five and the bottom four fuse together and become one. So we have actually 26 bones when we become at the age of 26. Mm. So the 26 is a representation of the Z, or the Z, Zion. Which is the latitudinal, uh, sorry, longitudinal wave, which is a representation of the divine, or the divine feminine. So when we have the Taurus here, the Taurus energies, the alpha wave, this is the alpha and the omega. So we've got the beginning and the end. So the end would be the Z. This is where we're trying to get to on the alphabet. And um, we do have a video on the alphabet um, on our YouTube channel, if you want to go a little bit more in depth with that. But the Z wave is where we need to get to. And the reason why it's Z is, well, when, when someone's sleeping in a book, what do they write? Z, 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 Z. And this mm. is when we get to the Z or the Z. When we go to sleep, our consciousness is no longer... Now we've got we've got the the sleep realm or the real the real reality there. This is where we become our true self when all of our senses are switched off to this materialistic world. We've got no nothing going on with the five senses. We've got the, the not, not dreaming. Mm. Not dreaming. Dreaming is a dream state. Different. Just pure Just, return. Return to the Z. As you sleep, one wakes up. So this is the actual waking state, really, that we are still connected through the, the cord, the silver cord, but we are free from um, the pain, which is why they put you to sleep when you have an operation, because you don't feel any of these feelings. You don't have the, um, the sight the smell, the taste, all of this, what's going on in the busyness, this is all receiving. And these only, these only arise from thinking. The thought process activates all of it. <coughs> so when we can get past this and become the giver, um, as I was saying before, like the, um, the nature that the nature is just giving us all the time, the trees, the Christmas tree, um, all of the energies just giving for free and um, we are receivers of all of that so if we can align our energies with the, the giving this is when we become balanced and this is when we can rise and the alphabet is the alphabet which is the better of the alpha the alpha is each individual masculine or male or female here in this construct of reality but the better self is the solution. It's the B, the E, the T within the physical. So it's telling you to be this E, which is the divine feminine blue shape. So the solution is again within inside the word. But yes, that's the, but the tree is related to the spine or the pine and the light that go up. It is the progressive energy. Let me see. If it. we just see this um, picture here with the eight, the climate change that we spoke of. And this is a representation of the ladder that, that Santa climbs or the, the um, chimney, raising the energies through the chakra system mm. um, between those temples. And they say this is, you know, this is the sacrum 
and, and it rises, but Santa goes down and then he goes back up. And this is just the divine energy flow. And the eight, this is the reciprocate or the eight, the climate change within. And this is a, a big word um, that's being played around with in the matrix a lot at the moment because um, of climate change. And it happens with inside of us. And uh, the more that we change our being, the magic that happens inside of us reciprocates out to the earth and then the change happens. It starts within you and every being is responsible for their own actions and their own karma. Um, mm-hmm. Action is karma. Mm-hmm. But we're speaking about, you know, this, uh, this thing rising the spine. Is it just energy or is it a fluid of some sort? We're talking about the chrism oil and some some would say that you even have to uh, withhold your uh, sexual fluids to to make this process happen. What's your take on that? Well, excessive anything will stop it and elude you. Yeah. So most of the world are um, very much addicted to this type of behavior. So one of those things that's ringing about within the construct of truth seekers is that if one abstains from this, they'll become enlightened. It's not true. That concept will hold you from enlightenment. So it's just about abstinence. If the mind does it for you, then you're in trouble. (laughs) It'll fall off. (laughs) But this is the, um, again, if you watch the TV and you look at the media, all of it is about this is how they sell things. This is how they sell their products to you through the the sexual orientation, the the music videos, the perfumes, the anything for Christmas. If it sells, it's always got some kind of um, sexual relationship with um, that media. So if you're watching these shows and you're getting sucked into that kind of energy, this is where you'll find all of these images are. And this is what will create your world for you again. Is if you're seeing all of these images coming through to you, this is what your world will be because you're a construct of... Your attention. Yes. Mm. Wherever you put your attention, you will create that temple. So it depends on what one wishes to create. You are a master manifester. Your attention is the most powerful thing, but can you keep your attention on something that is not of previous past or constructed for you to create your own experience. So your attention is this tool, attention off the mind and attention into this moment and take action and watch the magic within your experience change. Your your whole experience can change just you know in a matter of uh, you know 10 to 15 days if one has a great attention, can you manifest a whole new experience in a whole new life. Mm-hmm. But most people's attention are given to work. Most people who want freedom from work ask for a a job that provides a lot of money. But yet they're asking for another job. There's a lot of focus on uh, on this um, manifesting, right? Or or the law of attraction and using this to get what you want kind of a thing. Uh, But most of the time those would be some materialistic goals. Is there any wrong in that or is that also depends if you have a desire for it uh. because if, if you hold no desire to something can it just is what it is this is what keeps you free for because what i have i have i've been through that you know like looking into that and and, and trying and didn't have much luck but but uh, what i have come to do now is more like not have any goal not have any mm-hmm vision or dreams or you know i'm just along for the ride does it work better for you yes Mm -hmm. because there's no uh, there's no expectations there's no anxiety there's no depressions there's nothing and how has your world changed or how has the earth changed since you've let go of all of that is there more energetic um, beings coming into your world to create with you and how have you seen that change since you've let go uh, greatly because there as you say there are coming beings i <laughs> i wanted to say uh 
it's a coincidence, but uh, there's no coincidence. <laughs> mm. So, so, but, but people or beings just coming into my life and then, you know, you see this one goes good with this one. So it's like kind of a mix, max, mix and match uh, kind of a thing. I'm caught in the middle feeling like I'm some kind of a contactor of beings. This is your divine gift mm -hmm. to the earth, brother. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Truly yeah. is. Well, you, uh... We see it. We see it with you. And this, this gift that you so greatly received because of letting go is now channeling through you. And it will only it continue will. its build, expression, and grow, and grow without you needing to do anything apart from remain true, and virtuous, and apply. Beautiful that to truth. see. Beautiful. The path of least resistance. Yes. Yes. And it uh, suits me very, very well. I was uh, for a while caught up. You know, you you heard these motivational speakers, and they tell you to wake up four a.m. <laughs> and start start working. Uh, it's not for me. <laughs> so, uh, so path of least resistance i'm all in it's the best absolutely yeah. simplicity and you know every all beings always with the left brain or the ego make things very complicated complex chaos um, because the ego feeds on this but the more you peel back and strip away and the easier you make things the better things happen and the more divine it is. And like you said, it, it can be classed as a coincidence at first. And then when it just keeps happening, then even faster. It's, it's just does. about becoming aware of it. Mm. Because if you're not aware of these processes, they go unseen. But if you're con conscious and consistently aware of what's happening as you go through these processes, make the mistake one knows. Of course one knows because you see it. You can create, you know, instantaneous action and you don't have to do anything if you are a good practitioner. Mm. Just through this energy. And the art of manifestation is absolutely becoming that vibration. So you have this emote or this emission from yourself, which instantaneously manifests from the field because there is no... You know, we, we think there's a causality within this realm, but how can there be a causality if there's no past or future? It's only a perpetual unveiling of this very moment. You are already it. It is already you. We just built up a person and believes in this experience through the recycling of its information. This is what it's like to be a terminator or a terminator, a term in a Taurus. When you're fixated on the person, you become this automatic machine, the rise of the machine, the terminator. This is the autonomous man. And go one way to extremes of the spirituality, you become an autonomous spiritual being, or you can become an autonomous artificial being within the matrix, but then there's this center balance that one understands the mind and the psychological processes, the way that it repeats information, and you give it good food. You feed it great food so it becomes this great mind. Light. Mm -hmm. well, There's no need to um, create that cycle with others, so because trying to drag another being on your specific journey, it only creates chaos. Mm -hmm. So to be at one with yourself and your universe is very, very important that then beings see you, see the light, See the aura, the golden sun that surrounds you and want to walk with you. They want to be with you. They want to walk this journey with you because they see this within you, within your being. Free will. Mm. Love and will. You can never change will. But I have had questions about exact that exactly. So we are said to have free will. We are said to have... Uh choice and we probably do but do we <laughs> also... yeah. it depends if you're identifying as a person because a person has no free will when you identify with your thoughts and you get this pain suffering anxiety fear depression did you choose that uh, not 
does one choose to suffer? If one had a choice, would they suffer? No, no. So do you think one is free if they're identified within the ego? Do you think one is free if they are in the moment? And they are identi non-identified, but their attention is so focused and involved in this, that this mind doesn't even exist. There is no conspiracy here. There's no shark eating me. There's none of this concepts that create this fear. It's just what is happening in this moment. And I'm not speaking. This is just happening. But this all comes to realization. So one, if one has to lack magic, <laughs> is in black magic, and they have no power over themselves, Pinocchio, and one will only find this by taking action, applying what they know to be true within their experience and involving their self in the moment, becoming a true living boy, woman or man, and uh, the fairy godmother will give you life. The divine feminine which is why the magic of christmas should always be there at every moment like um a lot of children will say i wish it could be christmas every day like the song mm -hmm. it it always truly is the magic is always there if you keep that within your heart space <laughs> this, to be involved in this moment is to see the beauty of this life but yet one feels joy in holding a plastic toy but yet this whole manifestation is magic mm. things are as they are see them as they are Oh, yeah. Did we have did we have questions or? Uh, we have some questions. Let me see. Uh, did we touch upon uh, everything about Christmas? That uh, let, let's go through the questions real quickly. So, uh, Lisa has a question. What's the symbolism of Jesus being born in a manger? In supposed to su supposed to mean? Uh, I think it's just to do with the fact that babies are put in a manger. <laughs> um, but the manger is um, balanced, the alpha moving towards G um, with the ether reciprocator. So if he was born in that space. That means he was born to receive the divine feminine. What would your Christmas day look like, Josh and Michelle? I would like to know as well. Mm -hmm. Especially oh, the menu. Cool. I was hoping uh, we should have been. Uh, we should have had time to do a menu Christmas <laughs> menu special before uh, before yeah. Christmas. At but least this Christmas. Would... Josh, Josh is the the best. I'm so gifted here with this as well because he has actually made it so simple for us to transition through all the years that we've been doing it this because he's the best alchemicalist when it comes to food <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> if, and if um you know if we were still eating as much as we did i would be um putting on lots of weight but this is a very interesting time because josh can make anything taste good so i'm very gifted so it's just a. Uh, I'm hoping and 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 uh, hoping I will can experience Josh's cooking mm, in the magic. Not so far future. <laughs> yes, and learn, not at least yeah. learn yeah. because uh, one can go so far. Or one can go. I, I can go far on just fruits uh, alone, but uh, to get my family aboard uh, yeah. in a greater yeah. to a greater extent, I think I need to do some magic in the kitchen. Of course, yeah. yeah. You know, the 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 world offers sugar instead of dates and fruit, you know, and uh, instead of coconut cream or cream avocado, etc. Offers you know cow's milk and things like this, but what it does is it destroys the body. So it's just understanding what one can use to create this wonderful flavor, and it's so much 
a hundred times more flavorsome than anything you'll find within a Michelin restaurant. You know? mm. And so what we are doing on Christmas, I would say this year, um, last year we were in Portugal on a wonderful fruit farm, which was amazing. This year we are back in the UK. So we will have family over, immediate family. And um, I would say I will be creating probably for two days previous, uh, a wonderful array of uh, whole food, raw and cooked food dishes um, for the family. So I will be doing a traditional, uh, ro like a roast with a, a nut roast. And then I'll be making uh, an incredible, everything that is available will be there. So, you know, the pickles, even mustard, I can create exactly the same as mustard by using dates and lemon juice and uh, mustard seeds, etc. So there won't be anything missing even the pickles you know all pickles and everything cakes yeah we, yeah, we well i usually do the cakes didn't i yeah mm -hmm. so i do a lot of puddings because i enjoy doing the pudding side of things so we make um like cookies and um, raw cakes um we mainly stick to the fruit side of things don't we so we'll probably we won't use nuts really but we'll have a yeah. nut roast but for cakes we don't use yeah nuts. We, we that's for more family isn't mm -hmm. it so we offer that as help like uh, you said brother with the family side of things because it's nice to get them eating with us without the need to put a, a poor turkey mm -hmm. on the table um <laughs> so we, yeah so we keep it all um, plant-based but there will be cooked options but um seeing as we will be just coming off the water fast we'll keep the fruit mm. intake really high and then just have other servings of um small portions so there'll be there. things like black forest gatto made from fruit there'll be cookies there'll be uh trifles and things like this and also frozen desserts um it's just so much here that uh but we I, will I can't be, put it in words. we will take photos yeah. and put them all on our website and uh take some video videos of how we make some of it yeah. and um yeah i need to make that. myself a christmas dinner so there's yeah. always an art there's always an art of thing you know especially when you don't use oil there's an art to your potatoes if you're doing potatoes. The simplest way with you know with parsnips, you just steam them, and you watch them, and you add salt if you have salt to them, and you keep moving them around a steamer. And as you do, it starts to fluff and break apart the outside of the skin, and as it just becomes soft enough, you'll see that it's built up this wonderful fluff around the outside. And then, and when you then you put it into a hot oven, and then you have crispier potatoes than you would ever have by frying them deep in oil and then even to make things like bread you would use a, a very large potato and you put it in the oven for maybe an hour and 25 minutes on 250 degrees and then the skin gets so hard you scrape out the middle leave it on the side for a few minutes and you it's have like a, a, a it's like a baguette. Baguette. Yeah, yeah like baguette. your come again you, you, the, you peel the potato or it's no skin? yeah yes. peel the potato peel the potato and then put it in like you bake a potato just without the silver foil and yeah the skin. i try to rub salt on the outside because bread has this salty taste so you just rub your salt on the outside place it in the oven and then you can part boil them if you wish for like 10 15 minutes or steam them and then do the same to get this fluffy texture but it's not necessary on a very high heat so about 250 i would say for about an hour and 30 an hour and 40 minutes and then it'll build this very great strong texture thick uh, bread <laughs> crust and then you because it's cut something... it and scrape it out and then you can use inside as well or is it too hard is, or is no, it no 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 it's hard. Thick, yeah, yeah you can use that as well you could mash it with some avocado instead of using any cream and then add salt to that too and that tastes great and if you use things like you know onions and chives and all these types of things you can just add onions and chives to it and, and have a wonderful uh, mashed potato. Or you can roll it and you could add some cilantro, uh, some parsley, some onion, and then roll them into little potato things and then put them back in the oven. And then they turn into croquettes. Wow. 
you this always make my mouth water when you talk about this food so <laughs> it probably now doesn't take much after 20 days on juice but anyway yeah uh, but raw living is an art as well so you know when when you do the raw foods it's incredible and there's so much artistic artistic flair that can be put into this and yeah why, so why all should, raw can be created one should have a, a, a restaurant serving that kind of food it, it would take one away from the wonderful yeah. ex-family in creation but we actually got offered didn't we in um, portugal to to make food for the the local government yes. <laughs> and uh offered us this organic space and uh, a restaurant and things like that that would be done for us because they the flavors they never tasted um but it's too, it's too much it's like it's a very big commitment to something that is our passion but not the lifestyle yeah. that you'd want to no no of course then yeah, you're yeah. in business if you but teach somebody to make that kind of food and let them have the restaurant and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's a flair within one has to have the delicate nature and the perception to be able to create these things so really you try to teach someone and you can't they have to have this drive and this will to make things perfect through the experience but let's say you find a kind of a, a master chef that's mm -hmm. open for to try new things that yeah, has, of course. Let's I say, mean, it would be a great restaurant. Yeah, I think so. Everything cool. washed properly. Yeah. That's also something. Anyway, next Christmas, I want to spend with you guys. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, it's hard. Let me see. Amazing. Love the hat. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> what is Brendan? What is um, immaculate conception? To be immaculate with no concepts. <laughs> exactly. To be pure, innocent in no sense, and present in pre sense. Exactly. The innocence is a true gift because if you see the children and in their innocence and they have no concepts built up there's no past they are so in the moment at every step until about the age of seven we've discussed before when they start to bring those concepts in um but the innocence that's there it really is a true gift that is yeah. because it, it takes you to that moment and really keeps you there and keeps the attention on whatever they're doing no matter yeah. what it is i've heard it explained like children upon the age of seven or that that area is pure consciousness they don't have the subconscious that that is they are pure consciousness and and program you know take in whatever they are uh, living through uh, and that will later make the kind of the person and then they will evolve the subconscious and these programs will be the automatic programs. Yeah. So Children are like ego less. They, they, the ego is built up from what they see. But as the ego starts to become noisy, so it starts to say, don't do this because of what has been told. This is this, this is a tree, this is a knife, this is a table. It starts to create this uh, interpretation and relay to you. So the children's attention comes from this into the moment to the mind at age seven. So then the mind has the attention and the children become the mind and they run around making a lot of noise because the mind makes a lot of noise. <laughs> and then it just becomes a natural part of their um, growing up unless they're taught that their attention should be kept here and redirected because this thing here will cause a minor bit of suffering as one goes through there. The ages which is the tv uh, a lot of the, the tv programs actually bring children up nowadays because this is the busyness again with the parents or the guardians or whoever is looking after the children it's easier to put them in front of the tv to have some quiet time than to actually sit with them and teach and learn together because um, this is part of the system and then the children learn off of these TV programs that they're watching and they're all cartoons and they're all about um, guns and they're all about 
computer <laughs> games and they're all about screaming and this is why and then they wonder why the children are acting like this and then the children get told they're naughty and they get no attention and they get and then this is where all of the problems come from and this attention deficit disorder the ADHD and all of these problems come from is because the children aren't getting the right nourishment when they're that young and then the program continues and then when they're older it's very hard to get out of that program because it's got them locked down it's that a different next degree. question because uh, <laughs> please carry on i will explain mm. my next question was uh, uh, this can this be de learned and i'm not attention. asking for a friend <laughs> it's, uh, attention is the key All you need to do is try to sit down. You know, the first thing is to change oneself. And in doing that, they will come to the recognition that all I need to do here is to divert the attention. Mm. So you give attention to the good things. You show them to give their attention to the moment and continually feed their mind with good things. And then the cycle will start to happen and it will start to relay good things. It'll have a good perception, a sweet perception. Um, so it's, this is the difference you see this you know this is a mind kiss and then that this is a a kiss in the moment mm. and people come home and they see their wife and kiss yeah. them it's and then the how are you, are you and it's all unconscious but truly can one stop and allow the mind to calm itself down and to be involved with this And to see your child yearning for you to see that daddy i love you so much and you are my guide and i just want you to teach me mm. now i feel guilty <laughs> that's I... a feeling it doesn't exist <laughs> when you uh, have now um, you can change any you can change this at any time and the children will just be a a reflection of your energy again like we said before this anything can be changed at any point and everything begins now if you think can you change it mm. if you think can you change it or do you just suffer you suffer in the moment that the child arises mm. that's the moment the attention is all that needs to be here if if the child is seen through the eyes of the mind the child gets no love one doesn't even know what love is if it's through the eyes of the mind And it's only to that child as an accident that oh, the heart space comes in yeah. and I love my child and then back on the phone. Mm. And this is what happens. Like, I know. I know very well. Too well. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, you feel that what you do is very important. So uh, very much like you just portrayed. Uh, Hi, how are you? And then back to my, uh, me, myself, and I. Um, it's getting better. I, I, I'm on my own journey, as we all are. Student of eternal student, <laughs> but, but it's it's getting better, and I'm uh, I'm uh, now we're in the middle of this moving process. I've been very busy. When this is done, I'm uh, don't have any debts. We don't have I don't have any work <laughs> for that matter. So there should be time. There's no time like the present, no brother. So uh, <laughs> we can all be better versions at every moment, but actually being aware of the that moment. is uh, a gift that you can offer mm -hmm. your family and your. Um, Don't beat yourself up through the process. Everybody the sometimes has their attention drawn to the mind. And that's fine. That's what happened. And here we just recognize that and draw it back until the switch, the transformation. It becomes automatic. And this moment here is where you identify as such. And then even beyond that, there is an identity less space, a seer, which is beyond even enlightenment itself. Speaking of um, little ones, I must um, love you all and leave because I need to... Go and see Little X. Thank <laughs> you so much for But being part of so the show. Thank you so much. It's been such a, a gift to mm. be with you guys today. Mm. Thank you. And you're, um, brother. You're welcome back at any time. No. <laughs> Eternal gratitude to you all.
Um, you and same to you. Merry Christmas. Have a joyous time. <laughs> merry, very Merry Christmas. Enjoy. Thank you for that. Thank you. A quick mind bar. Love you all. Love you. Bye bye. So no need for cheese. It was there. Huh? Yeah. No need for cheese on your plate. It was there. <laughs> Are we? Do you feel that we have? explain the christmas part to uh you know what i feel like everything is conceptualized will be christmas and all we need to do is enjoy each moment yeah i think this was a deep hidden understanding of the true meaning spread out over this session christmas is about you mm. it's about being present and in your presence life will shine you will shine your light on everyone. Mm. If someone listening should be intrigued or, or want to try to uh, understand more uh, uh, about this, the, the process itself, there's a few videos in the show notes with Bill Donahue talking about, uh, talking about these things and he's, he's mm. an interesting guy. But and this the, will lead us to the lost art of self, as we will cover this during a video. But, you know, the space of Christmas, we shan't go to the lost art of the self here, but this is all it's really about. Let go of your concepts. Try not to keep feeding this with information, mm. because this has to be broken down and assimilated and understood. And really, the joy is here. You've created this very world of all this information in, but it's where you give your attention to. Mm. If your attention, if you feel like your attention is best focused on a screen from somebody else's interpretation of life, rather than directed on yourself and your family, and you wonder why possibly that this isn't necessarily feeling like it's working, just allow time. So there's no need, there is no need but there's no not. benefits of evolving your intellectual mind i think there is to a certain point of course but when one sits in an intellectual space and then continues where is there to go mm. i mean what feeds intellect you know why does one want more intellect if one can already see if you can't see the world and its illusions of course go on a journey to be able to unravel that very nature of the world to see that you know, one may fear with the world, that fear has to be overcome. One may fear this very illusion that we're going through right now. One may have a fear that they have to get because of what's being said. But the only reason why one fears that is because their attention is given to this media. If you didn't watch the media, you wouldn't have the fear. Just let go and you'll be fine. It takes a great seeker to know and understand the nature of Babylon. Everything is illusory. Everything is concept. You must understand your person. You must understand that it's a legal fiction. You must understand the maritime advocacy law. You know, the UCC code, you can go into the law and spend 65 years there and never know the truth. The truth is a man is free and a person is not. The person is identified as a, as, as a, piece of paper but in the spiritual realm the person is identified as the body there's a unification between the world and the earth and yourself but know yourself as a true being you're free from any contract because contracts are with persons and everything within the commercial world is a contract mm. everything is consent don't be the person physically metaphysically so you're free nothing to fear you never be forced. That's an illusion. Everything is coercion. This is all that's going on within the mainstream media right now. It's coercion. It's a coercion system. From your attention, it breeds fear. It breeds anxiety. It breeds depression. In the moment you're in, can you find fear? Can you find anxiety? And can you find depression? Me? No. Uh... Can anyone... 
Well, if they get caught in the mind, future or past, they probably will. That's how it works, right? They're not here. No. You see, even if you're in a situation, you know, fear arises from thought. So you deal with the situation as it arises to the best of your ability. And if one thinks, you get eaten, for example. You know, it's the very same with your thoughts. If you deal with things and they arise, you don't get eaten by the demon, then you don't fall trap and get these emotional stimuli to show you where you are uh, devoid of truth. Mm. So Christmas. Everybody should have a wonderful Christmas. Do the very best for yourself and your family. Show them love, show them presence. Gifts are gifts. You know, just because you see the world do something and everybody focus their attention on shopping, that's fine. They do what they do. Because people eat meat, that's fine. They do what they do. You can't change will. You can only change yourself. Be free from the desire to change other people's will, because if one has a desire to change something, this causes suffering. Everything is perfect. Mm. It is, and it, it always is, right? Even if one, it doesn't fit one's expectations, then one has made the mistake of having expectations. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> People sit for enlightenment and have an expectation for enlightenment and the expectation eludes the enlightenment and have a desire to have no desire eludes one from being free. Yeah. It's a very great Rupees cube, the mind. It's a wonderful game to play. Just a question. Um, I think there is, I think we have touched there's one about some completely different things but i was just thinking this for those probably many of those listening are on the juice fest hopefully they are on the juice fest how would you best spend your days uh, coming closer to the end of the juice fest and the water fest like just trying to, you know water fast themselves bring a very great stillness because one has no desire to do anything extra than they need. So you become more involved. It brings this peace. It allows the mind to very much become very still because the dancing around and the attention drawn to it, one's, one's not got the energy for that. So that's what it does for the system. But also it does a great cleanse within one's body to detoxify, to eliminate heavy metals and to be you know, reversing ailments that people have had for, you know, most of their life. It's a, it's, it's a deep rooted regeneration process. Um, so not only does one benefit within the psychological processes and the ability to see them, people benefit via, you know, we had a great um, comment on one of our um, posts from a wonderful sister that we have. And she hasn't seen the benefits of water fasting before for this type of uh, time and doing a juice fast for this long. And she's seen someone that she hasn't seen for three months. And she said that her friend said she looked 10 years older than when, 10 years younger than when she's seen her three months ago. Mm. And this would have been just due to the nature of this fast. Mm. And it rehydrates oneself. See, aging, the aging process is a dehydration process for cooked foods and salts and improper eating. Yeah, I, I, I've uh, even gotten some some compliments uh, <laughs> myself. <laughs> but what, what I noticed this juice fast compared to last one, I, I remember last year after, I really believe we started on the Monday and I believe that first weekend I was feeling you know, having detox symptoms, feeling sick, uh, feeling like I would never drink another glass of juice in my life, uh, you know, after these uh, five, six days. 
this all passed and you know this uh, and we're back in business but this time around i haven't had any had any detox symptoms so then probably i can assume that i'm or am or was pretty clean uh yeah i would definitely say that you know the body has a lot of parasites if one eats a certain type of food but because of the nature of your eating habits previous to this and how long you've been on a journey you know there is no necessary need to purge these uh, hosts the buildup of toxins comes from what one consumes so absolutely it's related um, as you go into the water fast though you may experience a deeper cleanse you may experience this well, uh, t- t- a small type of detox there but um to go through that is going to be really special it's going to really bring purity and appreciation even for the very first meal that one has hypersensitivity hyper awareness and uh heightened senses beyond anything that one can remember so no issues in you know doing the water fast from let's say the 18th to the 21st compared to 21st to 24th no, no, no. We, we are doing that ourselves. And uh, I think we're going to hold the Q&A this strong on Saturday. So that is the 18th. So we can have questions about that day and um, allowing everybody to, you know, get some clear sight. But just not to remember, uh, not to forget the courses there with uh, all of this information. And we do keep the updates and posts. Okay, brother, we are, uh, how long are we? Yeah, whatever. Uh, one, one hour, 45 minutes. What do you think? Should we? I think. Or you I don't think. think, I know you don't think, but <laughs> <laughs> how do we? I'm happy here and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for this, uh, this day and um, apologies if anyone had expectations that we would go through all of the, uh, the concepts behind conspiracy with Christmas, but there's no need for this attention. Yeah, as one progresses and realizes the simplicity is found here, that our attention does not need to be given to these concepts. Just a moment. Of course, all of these concepts that distract one from this truth, which we shared, and also a deep translation of the etymology and numerology to bring synchronicity for people to see that the divinity is there behind these things. And this reveals oneself, it reveals joy and truth. And your attention on joy and truth things are true for joyous being. The attention on the negative things brings the negativity and the perception that it is uh, very separate from happiness. Mm. Amazing. So be free. Do the best of your ability this Xmas. Don't judge yourself. If you have food of a certain way, it is what it is. And if you feel a certain way, it is what it is. Don't regret eating something that has been gone or has been done. And don't excess it. Don't think excessively about it. Don't because, suffer before and suffer after. Because the judgment or your self judgment of doing it is worse than actually doing it, actually digesting the food. You know, it depends. I think it's related. You know, same. You can destroy yourself by thinking. You can destroy yourself by eating. But if everything is natural, that's how it's supposed to be. So if you eat natural, then you will never destroy your being via food. You learn, you destroy yourself by thoughts. But as one goes on this journey, they come to the realization that fruit is what makes one feel best. And if one chooses to have an experience, that's all it is. You do what you wish to do. Nobody here has any judgment on you. It's your experience. It's your temple building. And for one to truly know, they have to go through these steps. For one to know that this food causes this pain once one's become pure, they have to go back and forth and experience and sample this and then one can assess if it's worth it let's say you have a <laughs> a, a dish that's not uh, 
not necessarily a bacon cheese hamburger, but uh, so, something that gives you pain, pain body experience. Mm -hmm. uh, then think about it, feel it, and then. Then you know, don't you? Yeah. Wisdom. That's wisdom. It's not hearsay. It's not someone else's experience because you live life through your own experience. But yeah, if you're overshadowed by the mind itself, you repeat cycles of most of the time other people's experiences and a little of what is seen. My ego passed down from ego to ego to ego. This is why people eat this type of food because it was a trained food protocol um, to sustain this amount of people in land that doesn't produce food. Yeah. We need to do something about that. It's happening. It is. It's happening. Okay, yeah. brother. Thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. And so I'm so grateful for you taking your time and mm. giving us your gnosis about these things. Yes. Stay present. There is no greater gift. Attention from here to this moment and redirect it consistently here with your focus and you will find a great transformation. Build your temple with truth. See the happiness and joy in all things and focus on that. And you'll find your very stimulation, stimulate you, excite you and bring happiness to everyone around you. Revealing this self, pure love. Pure love. Know the self. love to everyone thank you all for being here it was a pleasure once again thank you all for listening and have a very merry christmas and a happy mm -hmm. new year i think we will be back after new year let's see how things happen yeah let's see what what aligns yes yes thank you love bye you bye all. everybody bye 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 And we're off. <laughs>